Becoming an iconic rap star at the age of 16 with viral hits like Love Sosa and I Don't Like, Chief Keef is a notable artist who has accomplished so much in his career at such a young age and has greatly influenced his generation. With his rise to fame in 2012, Keef opened up a new chapter of hip hop and introduced a new generation that would change hip hop forever. In this new chapter of hip hop, Chief Keef brought out a new style, sound, and voice to the table that we'd never seen from any artist before. Coming from one of the most dangerous areas in the US, Keef made the best out of his circumstances and gave the world a raw view of his environment through his videos and music. Since his entry into the game, he has signed to major labels, worked with some of the biggest names in hip hop, amassed a fortune to his name, and has had a great music career. But with every great artist, there is always a long path to reach glory that begins at square one. Let's take a trip to the past and pinpoint how Sosa started with rap. Chief Keef was born on August 15th, 1995 in Chicago and lived in the Parkway Garden Homes, locally known as Oblak. Growing up, Keef says the first rap music he ever listened to was G-Unit and Beanie Siegel. Keef started rapping when he was only five years old and he would use his mom's karaoke machine to record freestyles on blank tapes with his friends. They would rap over simple beats and called themselves Total Domination. This was all for fun, and he wasn't serious about being an artist until he met DJ Ken when Keith was only 11 or 12 years old. DJ Ken is a very important character in Chief Keith's life. Originally from the Yamagata Prefecture of Japan, Ken moved to the U.S. when he was 20 years old. Ken moved to the U.S. to chase his dreams of becoming an icon in the music business. Ken started listening to hip-hop music in high school and was forever inspired. Ken wanted more from his life and did not want to be stuck in Japan. Ken claims that Japan is 90% Japanese people and lacks diversity. He wanted to live his life to the fullest and see everything that the world had to offer him. He took the biggest risk of his life and left everything behind him to chase the American dream in the USA. Without knowing any English at all, he flew to New York and planned on staying there for a year just to see how it was. He attended English school there, but quickly realized how real life in the U.S. is. He liked this new lifestyle and decided he was going to need to bust a move in order to really make it. He didn't know anybody and only had his pit bull that he got while he was in New York. He had no car, so he needed to relocate somewhere where he could make it without needing one. DJ Ken then researched online for different cities in the U.S. where he could possibly relocate to and stumbled across Chicago. Chicago had decent public transportation options like buses and trains similar to Japan. He did not know anything about Chicago prior to his research other than the fact that popular artists Kanye West and R. Kelly were from there. This inspired him and gave him hope that there might be some music opportunities out there. Knowing little to no English and not knowing a single person in Chicago, he trusted his gut and took the chance not knowing what was ahead of him. He then made a move and took the leap to Chicago from New York. He originally planned on being in New York for a year, but moved to Chicago within 10 months. With his pit bull, DJ Ken arrived in Chicago and his first mission was to find a place to stay. He went on a walk with his dog through Inglewood and went around asking random people for a place to stay. This is when he stumbled across a couple of Chief Keef's family members and Chief Keef's uncle, Big Keef, took him to an apartment that he could stay at if he paid rent. This spot was across the street from Chief Keef's place. After Ken found his own place, he then needed to gather the tools necessary for him to make music. He found a job at a Japanese restaurant and saved up his money to buy studio equipment. Over time, he was able to get his equipment, which he set up in his room and got right to learning. 
Ken never made music prior to coming to America, and he had to teach himself everything. Even though DJ Ken is not an actual DJ, he went with the name because he thought it was something unique and different. With everything set up, he decided to go by the name of DJ Ken AON, and his producer tag was All or Nothing. Ken had a good relationship with Chief Keef's uncle and started doing some music with him. Chief Keef saw his uncle making music with Ken and was inspired to make music too. His uncle introduced Chief Keef to DJ Ken, and from there, the two of them started to work together. Ken allowed many people from the neighborhood into the studio to work, but from the start, he noticed that out of everyone, Keef had something different, and he saw the star power in him at an early age. DJ Ken stated, First time I came to the studio, I didn't mess with a lot of people, but when Keef came to my studio, I was like, he's different. He always comes with something new. Everybody is trying to do somebody else. No disrespect to anybody, but Keith, each song he comes with something new, it's just him. The two of them did not know much about music, but one thing they did know and have in common was their work ethic. They were both willing to put the work in to learn and master their craft together. DJ Ken got a feel for producing and began training the young legend. Ken mentored Keith and gave him several tips that Keith uses to this day. For example, Ken told Keith when he writes his lyrics, he should focus on what's happening around him currently and to not think so much. He also told Keith that being unique, original, and different is the key to success in the rap game. Keith started recording with DJ Ken's first studio in 2007 and was only 11 years old. He picked out his artist name, Chief Keith, and it wasn't until 2009 that Chief Keith would start releasing his first mixtapes, UF Overload, Chicago Mania Volume 1, 2, and 3, and Bang Bang Flintstone Gang were the first few ancient pieces of work the duo created together. At the time of this recording, many of these tapes have been lost and unavailable online. These few mixtapes got his feet wet with music and he started to realize he had a true talent. On January 7, 2010, Mula Express was released and featured 20 tracks from the then 14 year old. DJ Ken's beats have a very distinct sound to them and are very unique. Going hard, the duo had a momentum going that they were not planning on stopping anytime soon. Chief Keef had his first run in with the law on January 27, 2011. He was apprehended on charges of heroin manufacture and distribution. Keefe was placed under house arrest and this was a turning point in his life. He decided to stop selling drugs and focus all his time on music. The duo released The Glory Road on July 9th, 2011 and later that year their lives would change forever when Chief Keefe's single, Bang, was released. Yeah man, it's A.O.N. man, we in this bitch, you know what I'm saying, making this young beat called down, down the glory road, you know, man, you know, influenced by the glory boys, man, yo, man, all or nothing, man, you know, DJ Ken on the beat, you know, I'm just sitting right here, you know, motherfucking coach with the shit, man, you know, man, you wanna hear this shit, man, that's how I rock, man. DJ Ken had a business mindset from the beginning and knew he had to find ways to get GBE's name out into the world. One method that he tried was filming music videos and vlogs to his YouTube channel. Ken did not want to waste time waiting on others to come and film and purchased a camera himself. Tank dog, maniac crazy. GBE shit, bitch. You got DJ Ken doing your video and shit. You know, I'm, I'm trying to find a nigga shop Ken right now, man. man. We out here, man. Fuck with your boy. Ken was now not only the in-house producer slash engineer, but he was also a director filming several different artists in the area. Ken would spend much of his time filming and trying to put everyone on. He filmed Larice, Sasha Gohard, Fredo Santana, and others. He quickly learned how to edit videos and would eventually film some of Chief Keef's greatest moments. One day in the studio while Ken was making beats, Chief Keef told him he wanted to make a song that people would really rock to. 
They worked on this track together, and the two of them knew that this would be the song that would finally go big. Bang came for me because my life and shit that's going on around me. Everything that's what Bang came for. My I was in the studio and I told Kim we made making a big shit. I'm like, I'm making nothing. I'm making so much money to rock with. And I made that shit. I'm like, man. I told Kim like, man, I'm gonna rock with this man. I swear to God. I'm like, well, watch how this shit be. Yeah, this shit, that shit, that shit came. That shit. So you knew from the gate that it was go it was gonna be as big as it is now. You knew that before y'all even got recorded. I don't know. Right. I was just telling Ken that shit. Like that night. They made the track and decided they would link up with local videographer D Gaines for help with shooting the video. He said the song was so grimy and had so much energy to it, he really wanted to represent that in the video. They met at DJ Ken's studio and shot the bang video in 30 minutes. From here, Everything changed for the two. That smooth's got me going off. You can hear it in the air. We yeah. don't talk like some stairs on stairs. Yeah. Fuck, why we going that hell? Uh -huh. Can't fuck around with bitches, niggas. Cause they be acting like hoes. Uh -huh. A lot of hoes out here, though. But I'm gonna let Sam blow let like. Blow. Bang, 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 bang. The now 15 year old gave the internet a view of his world by rapping about his struggles and the reality of Chicago. While making trigger pulling gestures towards the camera, he shows the camera the impact gun violence has had on his life. Bang was the record that finally had him take off in the city and the streets. He never had any blog posts about him, radio plays, or coverage at all before this. After Bang dropped, Chief Keef truly made his mark in Chicago, and this was finally the big break he knew was coming. The video was a sensation and started to quickly rack up views. Local high schools tuned in, and Keef amassed a dedicated local following. By the end of 2011, the video had amassed over 400,000 views, and at the time of this recording, the video has over 14 million views. This hit song inspired Chief Keef to name his next mixtape, Bang the Mixtape. Bang is one of his favorite and most famous ad-libs to this day. At this time, Chief Keef was still a local artist, but had made a name for himself. It's to finally meet you. Shit's legendary right here, man. You know, when I want to find somebody, I'm going to find them, man. I come straight to their living room, to their basement, wherever they at, man. I'm going to come catch them in their element and see what's going on. So we here rocking out right now. It's a pleasure to finally meet you once again. Man, tell, tell the world, man, just a little bit about who you are, man, and what you got going on. Man, I'm DJ Ken, you know, man. I just do all people on uh, TV, uh, Bang, in Crockett, you know, last song, you know. We just walk in, you know. We've been doing like five years, you know, since our man came, you know, since he was so, you know, man. We've been doing, you know, finally, like last year, you know, start to came up, you know, man. Right now, we're working on his uh, next week set, you know. Okay. Man, you, everybody gonna see us, man. Cool. So, man, so for most of the auto production, you do all the Chief Keith Chief, Chief Keith shit. You yeah. do all of them. Or for, for the most part, most of them. So he's the in house producer for the sound that y'all hearing. Young Chop was another producer in Chicago who played an important role in making Chief Keith a superstar. Young Chop linked up with DJ Ken and Chief Keith after Chief Keith hit him up. Ken always tried his best to learn from everybody he could. Chop tutored Ken on how to mix music. The trio would collaborate together on Bang the Mixtape with Young Chop producing one song off the tape called Smash. Bang the Mixtape was released on October 11th, 2011 and would push Chief Keef's career even more. Some fans even claim that Bang One was Chief Keef's best tape. From the lyrics, to the delivery, to the production, it was a tape full of hunger, letting the world know that Chief Keef wasn't stopping at Bang and was out for more. Bang was a 15 track mixtape with Ken producing 14 tracks off the tape and Young Chop producing one. DJ Ken captured some of the greatest moments in rap history. After Bang the Mixtape dropped, Chief Keef performed live for the first time on November 24th, 2011 at Adriana's a club in Chicago. DJ Ken was able to film this moment and it was an incredible thing. There were around 800 people there and around 80% of the crowd knew the lyrics for Bang word for word. Bye. 
Aimed At You was also dropped in November, and it was produced by Ken. D. Gaines filmed the music video for it. After this point, Chief Keefe had another run-in with the law that required him to be on house arrest. On house arrest, Chief Keefe and Ken filmed the music videos for Every Day's Halloween and Three Hana. Ken directed the two videos and did not produce either song. Like a father sending his son off to college, we see less and less of Ken on Keefe's music at this point as he excels in his career. From this point on, Chief Keefe's success had catapulted from a local level to a national one, and it was clear that he was the next big thing. Little B did a remix of Bang, and Soulja Boy remixed 300, and from here, it was cosign after cosign for the young star. Chief Keefe and Young Chop went to work on his next mixtape, Back From The Dead, releasing it on March 12th, 2012, and his single, I Don't Like, became a national sensation with Kanye West, Pusha T, Big Sean, and Jadakiss eventually remixing the song. Eventually the song would go platinum as well as Love Sosa, making both songs his most popular singles. With every label calling his phone, Chief Keef was finally a star and eventually signed to Interscope with a reported $6 million contract. His debut album was finally rich, with the majority of it being produced by Chop, and at the time of recording this video, it's a certified gold album with an excess of half a million sales. With several albums, dozens of mixtapes, and two platinum plaques to his name today, Chief Keef achieved his dream and surpassed all his obstacles to be the artist he is today. He's had an incredible career so far and has influenced hip-hop forever in so many new ways. Some even consider him an OG in the game and will forever be an inspiration to many for his accomplishments at such a young age. I got a theory that the music game as it is now wouldn't be going on if he ain't come from Japan, bro. I'm just saying, I don't know if everybody around y'all way would have been going to the speakers. All y'all niggas was doing was gang bangs. And you got the studio, they just started going to the studio and rap. With that bogus ass cover. You know, and boom. So, I just want you to know, I, I know and appreciate your importance in this music. Y'all don't even know if you know it, bro. But a lot of shit going on because of you, brother. You a sensei. Salute to you, man. DJ Ken is indeed a legend, and his courage and dedication to travel across the world to a brand new region without knowing any language, people, or having much money, and risking his life all for his dream of making music, is one that should be talked about for generations to come. He stepped way out of his comfort zone into a region most people wouldn't dare go into for the purpose of doing what he loves making music. Chief Keef's uncle played a major part in everything as well, because without his hospitality of allowing Ken in his home, Ken would never have linked up with Keef. His uncle unfortunately passed away, but his generous act in giving a stranger a chance will forever inspire the world. Take his journey and use it as motivation to pursue the dream that you desire. You just never know where you can end up, and you'll never know if you don't try. In my opinion, I don't believe Chief Keef would be where he is today if it weren't for DJ Ken taking his trip and building him up from ground zero as a child. Ken helped create the initial buzz for Keef in Chicago, which made it possible for Chop to help him turn to a superstar. Chop mastered drill beats for that era, and Chief Keef blew up off of them. Nowadays, he still maintains a great friendship with Chief Keef and the rest of GBE. He is actively involved with Shibua Tyson and is always uploading fun new videos. He is also the CEO of AON Studios and is actively working on finding new talent, sharing vlogs, gaining skills in music, and most importantly, doing what he loves.